Okay, Unit 3, I'm thinking this is Lecture 5, it's a supplemental specifically on the Articles of Confederation and why they fail, okay? Um, and we're going to go into a couple of things in a minute. Now, the Articles of Confederation is our first national government, our first constitution or plan of government, okay? Um, and it's going to rule the nation from 1776 through 1787, okay? And I want to go first into this, um, a quick review of federalism. Federalism is the concept or idea that power is shared between the national government and the local governments and states. I want to show how it functions under the Articles compared to the Constitution so that you can understand. So under the Articles of Confederation, we have this. The states have all sorts of power. The federal government has very little power, and there's some concurrent powers where they both have. Okay, So that's federalism under the Articles. All right, Federalism under the Constitution, we see the federal government, national government, has a lot more power. The states have some powers, and there's quite a few more shared powers, okay? So federalism, the, this demonstrates the differences between the power of the national government in the Articles of Confederation compared to the Constitution, okay? So, um, as we're going into this, um, there is some good about the Articles, so we'll cover that first, all right? There's a few good things. Um, <coughs> the war. <coughs> the Articles managed to guide us through the Revolution, which is a pretty big deal considering the size and strength of Great Britain, okay? Um, the Treaty of Paris, which ends the Revolution, all right? Remember the map and how much land we gained. And number three is the Northwest Ordinance, okay? The Northwest Ordinance is a pretty good deal, all right? Um, so it, it's a good piece of legislation. It lays out how, how a territory becomes a state. It sells some public land to pay down our debt and fund schools and ban slavery in the Northwest Territories. So the articles aren't all bad, but they're far, far, far from good, and the bad really outweighs the good. So we want to look at that. Um, more so. All right, the articles give very little power to the central government. So we have a weak, weak, weak central government. All right, that's number one. All right, um, there's a distrust and fear of tyranny that the founders had, so they kept power in local hands for the states. So under the articles, it, it's almost like there are 13 separate nations that kind of work together every now and then. All right, lots of mistrust. During the revolution, fear of Britain made the colonies work together. That fear is gone, so they start to fall apart. All right, so number one problem, weak central government. Number two problem, no national currency. Every state has its own, its own currency. Number three, no power to tax. All right, no budget. This, the, this national government is at the mercy of the states for finances. Four, it's very inflexible. It takes unanimous agreement to change or amend the articles. That's like impossible to get. I mean, if I said, hey, everyone, I'm going to get ice cream for a all tomorrow, let's agree. 100% agreement on a flavor for free ice cream. Let's see how we do with that. All right, uh, five, Congress has no power to regulate interstate industry interstate trade. So we have tariff wars and conflict between states over trade. Six, Congress is the only branch of government, so there's no executive to enforce the law, there's no judicial to interpret the law. Okay? And then, so this is bad, and we can see it's bad. And the straw that breaks the, the, the cow's back, that's really going to demonstrate to everyone that the articles are really bad, is Shea's Rebellion. Okay? Um, Shea's Rebellion was a revolt by poor farmers in Massachusetts over unfair taxes and monetary policies. And it scares the heck out of the wealthy upper class, and the Massachusetts government is both unprepared and unable to respond. All right, so then they asked the federal government for help, and um, they can't. They're unable to, to raise an army to assist Massachusetts. So this event really demonstrates the weaknesses of our national government and shows that we really need a stronger central government, especially to the upper classes, to provide stability, to provide protection for, of our natural rights. And um, remember, if government can't protect our natural rights, we're supposed to abolish it or change it. So some of the elites say guys like James Madison and Alexander Hamilton, for example, and John Jay, um, even begin to write papers calling for a stronger government. All right, and these will be the Federalist Papers, which we'll discuss later on. All right, but so the Articles are obviously we can't protect our natural rights. Okay, and um, we'll discuss this. If you look at a lot of the problems with the Articles, they deal with um, economics, taxation. Um, control of trade, all right, and um, issues like that. So we can talk about the Constitution then almost as a financial document, as an economic document. So bring that up in class and we'll talk about it, all right? That's that.